Welcome to another video from Lockdown Electronics with me Bill and this time we're going to take a look at a semiconductor device that we've not looked at before it's one that uh, used to be very popular back in the 70s and 80s there used to be many circuits in the electronics mags that used these and that device in question is the unijunction transistor so let's start by taking a look at uh, what exactly this device is the UGAT then this is the symbol and uh, it's quite a distinctive, um, similar to the JFET symbol except for the fact that the emitter connection is angled rather than straight uh, and we've got the three connections, emitter base 1 and base 2. Um, construction uh, usually is a piece of n-type material uh, with base 1 and base 2 at the bottom and the top of that. Inlaid into that is some uh, P type material which is the emitter connection and it's possibly tempting at this point to draw a similarity between the unijunction transistor and an n-channel JFET which is on the right there um, and whilst they might look similar operation is very different the FET of course being a um, voltage control device with a very very small indeed gate uh, current whereas the uh, emitter current on a UJT can be uh, considerably higher. So let's look at uh, the first uh, or, the, or the very common application of these uh, transistors and that is uh, an oscillator um, and it's delightfully simple in its arrangement. We've got um, the 39k resistor there is charging up the 100 nanofarad capacitor and it's that which controls the uh, frequency of the oscillation. Um, once the charge of the 100 nanofarad capacitor reaches a certain level, um, uh, the emitter to uh, base uh, junction on the UJT breaks down and results in a, a very rapid um, discharge of that capacitor, uh, followed by a repeat of the charging again. And we'll look at that uh, uh, on the scope. We'll also look a couple of other aspects of it. On the breadboard then, very very simple layout, don't think that needs too ex much explanation. The blue jumper wire is just an easy way of getting the uh, output uh, which I'm taking from the emitter uh, connection on, uh, on this uh, particular circuit. And when we look at this circuit in a moment on the bench I'm going to be uh, probing three points with the scope. Test point one is going to be what I'm calling the output, that's the blue uh, wire there and I'm also look at what's happening on uh, on base 2 and base 1 test points 2 and 3. Right well let's hop across to the bench and see this thing in practice. Okay here is the first oscillator on the breadboard and there really isn't terribly much to see I'm afraid it doesn't make very exciting viewing so I've got um, scope attached to uh, the emitter here with this uh, yellow jumper and then I've got uh, base 1 and base 2 with these uh, two little jumpers here fed to uh, uh, another two channels on the scope. So I'm going to reposition so we can see the scope trace and then uh, we'll power up the uh, oscillator and see what happens. Okay, well there's the um, scope trace, not a whole bunch of anything going on. So I'm going to apply some power and got about uh, 12 volts something 11 and a half 12 volts here so we'll apply that now and uh, straight away you can see uh, rather an impressive uh, what looks like a sawtooth wave there um, and I think the first most obvious thing to note is that uh, a gentle rise time it isn't a straight line it is a, a curve it's the classic um, capacitance charging curve I'll just um, freeze the display for you so you can see it a little better but the uh, charging curve is absolutely um, as a result of the uh, capacitor charging up and when it reaches uh, the threshold point for the unijunction transistor the uh, collapse is quite spectacular we get a very very rapid uh, discharge of the capacitor falling back down and uh, the cycle starts again. So that's what's happening on the emitter. Let's restart the display. And what I'm now going to do is switch on uh, base 2. 
and you can obviously see what's going on there on base two we've got that spike and if I switch on base one we've got a spike running in the opposite direction and I include those two traces because uh, th that spike is potentially uh, quite useful and uh, used to be made use of quite a lot for uh, triggering uh, silicon controlled rectifiers I think there's just better ways to do it now but um, that certainly was uh, quite a popular use of uh, unijunction transistors in the past so just make a mental note that we've got that um, charging up curve um, it's not quite a sawtooth wave because the curve uh, is a curve and isn't straight um, and let's now have a look at the second application of the circuit okay so I want to move on to the second circuit but uh, I want to just remind you of what uh, the first one looked like so essentially what we've got there is we've got that 100 nanofarad capacitor being charged up through the 39k resistor and those nodes of those two um, components are attached to the emitter of the unijunction transistor so the next circuit's a little bit more complex but hopefully uh, you'll see the very obvious uh, connection with this one um, and what we've now got as well as the unijunction transistor we've got a, a 2N3906 and a 2N3904 let's just concentrate for a moment though on the left hand side of the circuit the 2N3906 and we've still got that 100 nanofarad capacitor uh, connected between ground and the emitter of the unijunction transistor but now the charging of that capacitor is accompanied is accomplished through the 2N3906 with its attendant uh, adjustable potentiometer in the uh, emitter and obviously there's a couple of resistors uh, bias in the base of that transistor and what that bit of circuitry produces is a constant current source and we can adjust the amount of current using the 10k pot so what we're now doing is controlling the um, charge rate of the 100 nanofarad capacitor uh, by using that transistor as a current uh, constant current source so the output then we're still taking from the emitter of the unijunction transistor and all I've done on the right hand side there with the 2N3904 is simply buffer the output so that whatever we end up doing with the output uh, doesn't impact too much on what's going on uh, with the uh, oscillation of the, the 2N2646 unijunction transistor and we've just got a 5k pot and a 4.7 microfarad decoupling DC uh, decoupling capacitor on the output um, for what I'm going to use this for that wouldn't matter too much but I've just included it there for completeness sake so very straightforward layout again um, on the breadboard it probably doesn't need too much explanation it's laid out roughly as per the circuit uh, with the um, uh, current adjustment pot on the left and the output level adjustment pot on the right and the blue capacitor at the bottom right is the, um, the DC uh, decoupling capacitor that uh, we'll take the output from. So let's hop across back to the bench again and let's have a look at that circuit in operation. Okay so here's the um, second oscillator uh, running away on the breadboard. I've already got power applied so let's look at the uh, waveform produced and I think the first thing to strike you straight away is that the charging curve of that capacitor is no longer um, a curve it's absolutely a straight line and uh, this pot here is the one which alters the uh, output um, level and this is the one that alters the frequency so if I just turn that down to its lowest there and then turn it up to its highest you can see we've got quite a, a sweep of frequency I'll go back to what is roughly the middle there something like that and if we now turn on um, some statistics and look at the rise time and the fall time uh, she doesn't need a digital scope uh, maths algorithm to tell you that the rise time is considerably longer than the fall time indeed in this case uh, we've got um, a rise time measured in microseconds sorry in milliseconds and a fall time measured in 
microseconds so there's at least three orders of magnitude in difference there in terms of the time and we have got a very abrupt uh, discharge of that capacitor followed by a, a nice linear rise now there's lots of potential uses for that kind of thing um, uh, for instance an oscilloscope time base uh, might quite like a linear sweep like that so that's hopefully a uh, example uh, of the use of a unijunction um, oscillator and in this case of course being that transistor providing a, a constant current source for charging this uh, capacitor and the third transistor is merely acting as a, an output buffer so that was circuit number two okay that concludes our look at the unijunction transistor hope you've found it interesting i certainly enjoyed researching a component which was very very common in circuits in electronics mags in the the 70s and 80s and it's something i've never fully understood so i'm glad i've made the effort to to learn about it which is one of the reasons i, I, I make these videos it's uh, part of self-training in uh, in electronics and things like that and i enjoy that so hopefully you have too uh, thanks very much for watching if you're in the market for a multimeter or something please check out the kiwitz ones you'll find the information in the description if you use the code you'll get a discount and that helps the channel i'd appreciate that thanks very much for watching and look forward to seeing you on the next video